Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering five projects that you can do for free in order to put on your resume to help you break into the cybersecurity field. This video is designed to be used in conjunction with this other video here, this how to get into cybersecurity with no experience. In this video, I kind of talk about this list here uh, of things you can kind of implement to increase your chances in getting to the field. And this particular video that covers the five projects, it's designed to kind of fulfill this step three or part of the step three uh, gain security credential and hands-on security experience. So this video kind of helps to satisfy the gaining of hands-on security experience for this step in jumping into the cyber field. All the projects that I'm going to talk about in this video are totally free to do. I mean, assuming you have a computer and stuff. For each project, I'm going to cover what exactly you can expect to get out of it in terms of what technologies you'll work with and like what kind of things you can put on your resume. And then for each project, I'll also give an example of what you might end up writing that actually goes on your resume to kind of show that you have experience in this area. So yeah, let's smash that like button and we'll get right into the list. So the very first project on the list is setting up a SIM or SIM, however you want to pronounce that. I'm going to say SIM, setting up a SIM for free in Azure. SIM stands for Security Information and Event Management. And if you search on Indeed for SIM, you'll see a whole bunch of jobs listing it in the description, like Information Security Engineer, Security Analyst, Junior Cyber Defense Analyst, Cybersecurity Engineer. It's on like a lot of job descriptions and like a lot of uh, requirements. You know how I feel about job requirements, but you see it a lot anyway, is the point I'm trying to make. And it's really good if you can get exposure to it and at least kind of learn how to use one a little bit on your own. So at least you can put it on your resume. It's kind of one of those things that's like really hard to get experience with unless you're already working in an environment that has a SIM that you can actually use. But I actually made a video that kind of covers how you can set up your own SIM in Azure and actually monitor live attacks and plot them on a world map. So I'll put a link to all these videos in the description, but pretty much I, I created this lab here. It's a little bit less than an hour long and it kind of shows you how to set up a SIM in Azure and you set up a virtual machine and kind of expose a virtual machine to the internet and you get like live attacks from people like all over the world pretty much goes through how to set up all this thing and then extract the log files and then ultimately at the very end of the lab we kind of can observe attacks from all over the world and it's really interesting the whole process is interesting and at least like gets your kind of like gets your foot in the door at least in terms of interacting with and using a sim i didn't actually set up any alerts in this lab i just kind of uh, did like an initial setup collected some logs plotted them on a map this kind of thing so after doing this lab you can kind of expand on this a little bit more probably and like maybe use microsoft docs and like figure out how to set up alerts or something like this and you know make it better than what i did and then you can ultimately put it on your resume and it might look something like this So yeah, that's the SIM project number one. You do have to set up a, an Azure account, but you can get $200 free for the first month, which is which is more than enough to cover this lab. So yeah, that is setting up a SIM in Azure. After going through this lab and setting up the SIM in Azure, you can expect to get exposure to like Azure itself, of course, the Azure portal, working with Azure Sentinel, which is Microsoft's cloud SIM. You'll get experience using KQL or Kusto query language. We use this to kind of build that fancy map we were looking at in the end. And you'll also get experience in working with network security groups. That's kind of like a layer three slash four firewall that works in Azure. In this lab, we actually like, we actually created a network security group and like open up all the ports on it. So people like all over the internet can like discover the, can discover our, our honeypot faster. It's very cool. So yeah, that is the first project, setting up a SIM in Azure. And project number two, setting up a virtual environment that runs Active Directory and creating a bunch of users in that environment with PowerShell. The reason this is a great project is because businesses like all over the world, like everywhere, like use Active Directory as our identity provider to kind of keep track of users and, and control access to resources. So if we go to Indeed here and we search Active Directory, you just see like a whole bunch of jobs, like 28,000 jobs. Senior IT support engineer, IT engineer, senior information security administrator, system administrator, all kinds of jobs. And Active Directory is like particularly important with information security because there's like a million ways to defend Active Directory and there's also like a million, a million ways to attack it. So it's just one of those things that pretty much everyone should know. I actually have a couple of videos that cover Active Directory. I'd recommend using this top one. This is like the most recent new one. Um, you can set this up on your own computer. I kind of go through the steps showing you how to like set up VirtualBox and like create the VMs and like do all the stuff with PowerShell, create the users. We walk through that whole thing and it should give you a really good intuition of how Active Directory works. Um, if your computer's like not good enough, you can do the exact same thing in Azure. You just have to sign up for a free account, get those like $200 worth of free credits, and then you can kind of do the same thing in Azure just as easily. So definitely 
definitely recommend going through this, especially like if you're just trying to get into like IT in general or help desk, super, super useful. And it's kind of something that like all IT professionals should know, to be honest. So after going through this lab, of course, you'll get experience with Active Directory. You'll get some experience with PowerShell and user management. You'll get some experience working with Windows Server, of course. And if you set it up on your own computer, you'll get some experience with Oracle VirtualBox. And in the end, you might be able to put something on your resume that looks like this. And then project number three would be to create a file integrity monitor from scratch. Basically what a file integrity monitor does is it just inspects files continuously and makes sure that no unauthorized changes or any changes take place to the files, thus having the files retain their integrity. Integrity comes from the CIA triad that, that, that is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I did make a couple of videos on this as well. I have like a, a simplistic version of this video that doesn't really dive into the coding and then a more detailed one where I go through like a real live coding session, creating an actual file integrity monitor. And I give a demo where, you know, we're monitoring some files in a folder and if any of the files are changed or deleted, some actual and some alerts are raised. It's a really simple, it's a really simplistic project, but it really demonstrates your understanding of integrity and how it's, how it could be used in information security to safeguard information. After completing this project, you'll get exposure to PowerShell and coding in general, as well as working with some hashing algorithms, like whichever hashing algorithm you, you feel like using, whether it's like MD5, SHA-1 or SHA-512, you'll get exposure to working with hashing algorithms and you'll get a little bit of automation exposure as well. And after completing this lab, you might be able to put something on your resume that looks like this. And then the next project on the list, number four, would be a vulnerability management lab. In this project, we'd kind of set up a virtual environment on our own computer or in Azure. I would recommend doing it on your own computer, though, to be honest. Uh, installing Nessus Essentials, installing it, setting up a virtual machine, installing some deprecated old software on it, and then running vulnerability scans against that machine to discover any vulnerabilities that you might find, and then going through and remediating the vulnerabilities, and then running another scan to kind of make sure that they've been fixed. Vulnerability management is like a really important practice in information security in order to keep the general risk lower than it would be otherwise in the organization. All organizations technically should be using vulnerability management and there's like quite a lot of jobs with it as well. So if we go over to Indeed, check out Indeed, there's like a decent a decent number of jobs, 7,400 or so. Um, they might even be calling it like something else too. So maybe there, there might even be more than this. I also made a video kind of going over vulnerability management, like the step-by-step -step way to like set everything up and like set the server up and conduct the scans and everything. So check that out. Um, it's really useful, to be honest. It gives you a pretty decent intuition of like what a vulnerability is and like how to go about fixing them. It might be like a kind of nebulous idea in your head, but this video like really solidifies that. So you could implement this. You could watch this video, kind of implement your own version of it, maybe install some different software, try to remediate more vulnerabilities than I did in the actual video and kind of get some ex experience for yourself that way. In this lab, you'll get experience with working with Nessus Essentials, some virtualization. If you happen to use like VirtualBox, like Oracle VirtualBox in your own computer, and then you should get some experience with actual vulnerability remediation, which is really useful. And in the end, you might be able to put something on your resume that looks like this. And the last project, project number five that I have on the list is to build a simple REST API. I find that learn I found that learning how to build and code my own REST API like really helped my general understanding of of the web in general and how web applications might work. And it serves as like a really nice gateway into web application security testing because you have a better idea of how things are working with like all the web requests and authentication and all of those things. I think it's like it's like really really invaluable thing to learn. I do have a couple of videos that kind of cover REST API a little bit. These were like some of the very first videos I made, so they might be bad. Um, I would at least watch this REST API in six minute one. It gives you like a really high level, easy to understand explanation essentially of what REST APIs are. But when I go to build, when I go to build my own, I might, um, you can watch this one too. It's just like a really simple, simple demo, but I might recommend using uh, code with Mosh or like anyone else who has like a really decent, easy to follow video. I learned how to build REST API from code with Mosh. So I might just like recommend using him. Um, it's not in Python though. His is in Node.js, but he does some 
some have some pretty decent courses here. There's another one from Free Code Camp here. It's it seems to be newer than these ones. It might be use it might use newer libraries. Um, it is eight hours long, so there's that. But yeah, I'll definitely recommend learning how to build uh, and work with REST API. It's like super super useful to be honest. I don't regret learning that at all. And of course, after doing this project, obviously you'll get experience to coding and web development in general. Like I said, it's kind of a gateway to web application pen testing, and then it really gives you a good intuition for how APIs work. So if you need to use another API, it's just like much more easier because you have like a really good understanding of how they work. Those are my five projects to put on your cybersecurity or information technology resume. I've done all these things. I think they're really useful to be honest, and it's definitely better to have something like this on your resume than like nothing at all, especially when you're first trying to break into the field. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you have any opinions or any other suggestions for projects that people could do, I'd be super interested to read those. I'm sure it can help other people out as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing and using the notification bell. Help my channel out a lot. I also have a Patreon if you feel like supporting me. But yeah, we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.